Welcome back TCS viewers, Chris Nichols here from the camera store. You can see Calgary way off in the distance there. We're out in the Alberta countryside and we're going to talk about an exciting camera today. Now we started TCS TV seven years ago when we were really bad at it, but more importantly the D300S was still available on the market and it was even on the market already for quite a while. You know, so we've been waiting for seven years. When's the D400 going to come out? And I think everybody in the industry finally just assumed, I guess it's a 7100 or a 7000, I guess it's a 7200. But no, we do finally have the successor. It's the Nikon D500 and we have it here today. Now we're gonna go out, we're gonna find some wildlife, we're gonna hopefully get some birds and animals because that's one of the things this camera's good at. But you know, it has a really high price tag. I know a lot of people are talking about that. You know, a D750 is more affordable than this crop sensor camera. Well, we're gonna put it through its paces, see if it's just for wildlife and sports or can it do a whole lot more and see if we can justify the cost of this brand new camera today out on the road. So today we're out in the Sandian and Cross Conservation area, just a beautiful location. And they basically donated their land for people to learn, be educated, you know, appreciate nature. So a beautiful place. We've never shot here before. Now also, as you can see though, very bright sunny day. The D500 is supposed to have excellent dynamic range. We're pushing this and Jordan's gonna get a good idea of how this is gonna work in video because he's shooting the entire episode today on the Nikon D500 as well. And I've decided to bring some glass along, the 200 to 500, but right now as well, I've got the 300 f4 pf because this just makes such a nice compact lightweight walk around kind of camera hopefully if I see some birds or wildlife I'll have a good stab at it with this lens and you know the nice thing about the d500 right off the bat I love the grip it's very familiar like the d750 and a fairly lightweight package now we just played with the d5 recently we did a review on that camera and it had some interesting changes to the layout and the buttons and a lot of that's now been incorporated in the d500 and that's a good thing now first off I do like the smaller size body compared to the D5. I mean, Nikon's really been hitting it here. This feels a lot like a D750, which I love. I always thought that was ergonomically a near perfect camera. But we now have the changes with the function two button down here that we can customize below the OK button. And that, of course, means that the ISO button is now up here next to exposure comp. Now, it's funny, when I played with the D5, it was really confusing because I was so used to it down here. But for some reason on the smaller body, this just makes sense. So I'm not finding it confusing at all. Overall, it's a great grip, a great feel. I love the autofocus selector switch here this new joystick is very positive very easy to use we've also got dual card slot we're now incorporating SD and XQD I like that you can go with the new card format or the old they both work well and they're both readily available now in the back we've got a gorgeous LCD it does swivel out there look at that and very rugged who says you can't put that in a pro body and make it strong over 2 million dots as well. It's very sharp. It's really nice to use. And a very interesting change here now is we've got touchscreen. Now, in my opinion, it's kind of a mixed bag. I love touchscreen features, but it's only incorporated in certain places. Now, you can go into playback, and it's really nice. I can zoom in on my shot, zoom out. I can swipe through my pictures. Beautiful stuff. And if I'm in live view, I can use it for touch autofocus. I can move around where I want it to go. Also really nice. But at the same time, it's not incorporated in things like the quick menu, for example, I would normally expect to have it or in the regular menu doesn't do anything there so you'll just have to get used to it it's not a huge complaint it's just I would have liked to have seen personally that the touchscreen worked on all the features and then the user could select what they want it to be engaged for and not engaged for I mean everything else on an icon is customizable but at least this is a good first step okay guys so I'm going to take a shot here I'm going to take it at f7 I'm getting about 1 25th of a second now with the stabilizer, of course, that helps, but we are still kind of below the rule of thumb. But the D500 definitely has a nice stable shutter. I'm not getting a lot of slap. Quite confident to shoot here at slower shutter speeds and still get sharp pictures. So overall, that's been quite nice. 
Now the Nikon D5 and the D500 both advertise having 180,000 pixel RGB metering system. Now basically what that means, and Nikon have had this for a while, is that they can see red, green, and blue, different shades of color, and expose for them appropriately. You know, reds tend to actually expose darker than they actually would on a black and white meter, and yellows expose brighter, and so on and so forth. So they can adjust for that. And they basically segment your photo into a 180,000 piece jigsaw puzzle, and they can evaluate each sector individually. And you know, it's so hard to test these things without a laboratory, but I will say this, I'm shooting this nice little trail down here, we've got light pouring in, and even if the sun is coming right into the frame, the camera's exposing very well for the histogram, capturing it nicely, and I don't even need to use any exposure compensation. So, at least from the standpoint of a shooter, just out in the real world, it's very easy, and I don't really have to mess around with it too much. Took a picture of this sign here as well, I may test that for dynamic range later, we've got strong backlight, we'll see how it does. So we're coming out of the aspens here now, and uh, I mean, as beautiful as these trees are, we're not finding any damn animals, which is kind of what we're out here to find. Uh, we did see a horsefly, which was big enough to, you know, be classified as an animal. That almost bit us, but otherwise, hopefully, uh, we'll find some more. My guess is shouting out during camera views every 100 meters is not conducive to capturing birds in their natural habitat. All right, so right up in these trees behind us here, you can see it's quite dense, but we did find a whole herd of deer. Now it's not a great shot, but what it does let me do is talk about the D500's incredible autofocusing capabilities. Now through there, I was able to put one single spot right through the trees onto the face. It's very quick, very snappy, and I did get one in focus, which is nice. Now the D500 does have the same autofocusing as the D5, and up to that point, we were very impressed. I mean, that's probably the best autofocusing camera as far as an SLR goes that we've used. It did a a great job. Now what's nice about this is the 153 points are sprouted across the entire frame. You get the whole coverage so you can really go right to the extremes. Now the center autofocusing point is good to minus 4 EV, everything else is good to minus 3. And of the 153 points, you get to pick 55, which is a good amount. You've got this joystick, makes it super easy to just select on the fly. So overall, really, really impressed. Hopefully we'll find some more animals out there. Now, while we're on the topic of those deer out there, I did have one doe looking off to the side. Now, the instant that I took a photo of her, she looked and saw me. This shutter does put out a lot of noise, and that is a little bit concerning in a wildlife situation here. It does have a distinct clanking kind of noise. Now, of course, you have the quiet shutter. I'm gonna fire it right now. It is a little bit less. I almost might use that in a wildlife situation, and I really never use the quiet shutter before on these Nikon cameras. So one sort of issue that we have out here. All right, so we found a flat surface, and I want to try something next. There's a little bit of backstory. Uh, as you may know, on SLRs, where your camera's focusing and where you think it's focusing are not always the same point. You know, there are different systems being used, and that can sometimes lead to these AF fine-tune problems. So one of the things we can do on the D500 now, which is really exciting, is put the camera on a flat surface, go into live view, manually focus on something that we know to be sharp. There we go. You can punch in, get your focus exactly right. And then you're holding down the autofocus control button and then the live view record button at the same time. You give it a few seconds and what the camera's going to do is it's going to automatically micro adjust that particular lens with that particular body. I mean, this is genius. I don't know why we ever <laughs> had to deal with this in the past, you know, trying to focus on rulers and lens calibrators and then having to do these plus and minus values, hoping to get things zeroed in. Why can't the camera just do it for you automatically? I know it seems like at first, this is like the, the Snuggie of TV inventions. You know, at first you're like, that's a silly idea. But now you're like, that's genius. So this is Nikon Snuggie, but it is much easier than pointing this thing at a ruler and trying to micro adjust yourself. You know, it's amazing. You're out in a beautiful place like this, just surrounded by nature, the birds, the wind, the trees. And it just makes you think, do I have cell phone coverage right now? because I really want to download these photos and connect to my camera with Wi-Fi. Now luckily the Nikon D500 has you covered because we do have Wi-Fi connectivity, very standard. I mean, a lot like all their other packages, but now they've added Bluetooth connectivity. Now that's very interesting. It's ultra low power usage and it means that your phone can always be connected to your camera. It'll seamlessly jump back and forth between the two and it just enhances that connective capability between your camera and your phone. Now it doesn't end there. Nikon's also uh, now pioneering a brand new application, SnapBridge. Now they're really trying to build a photo community. You've got 20 gigs of space that you can upload to a lot like you know Dropbox or something like that but they're really trying to make it Nikon specific make sure you've got a hell of a data plan because that could eat it up very quickly out in a beautiful nature environment like this 
So go figure, you know, we go around all day throughout the woods. We don't see any birds that we want to shoot except one chickadee. And now we find some swallows out here at the parking lot, but that's okay. They actually do a very good test because they're small, they're far away, and they move very, very quickly. Now, first off, the autofocusing on the D500 is fantastic. 99 of your points are cross type. We've already talked about how you're getting 153 points across the spread. I'm using group focus right now. It's giving me a little bit of leeway to be off and it's tracking beautifully. Now, Nikon D500 also has 10 frames per second shooting. Excellent for this kind of stuff. So I can see a lot of people shooting wildlife and sports are going to really love this camera. Buffer rate of 200 shots, way more than you would ever need. So, you know, the only thing that I was kind of concerned about going into shooting this, when I was doing still photos out on the trail, when I would take a picture, the shutter would slap and, and you know, move it pretty hard, shake the camera pretty significantly. I'd find that my composition had shifted quite dramatically just for maybe the shutter hitting. But that being said, now that I'm shooting out here and I'm shooting at 10 frames per second, I'm actually finding it fairly easy to keep these swallows centered. So perhaps in continuous, it evens out, but single frames, it does jump a bit. Either way, if you're doing sports and wildlife, this is the camera that you want. It's going to do a great job. All right, guys, so we had a good time here at the Ann and Sandy Cross Conservation Area, but it's time to head out. You know, we, we didn't see a lot of animals today, but we did get to play with the camera, the handling, the features, the controls, a lot of that today. But uh, we still want to test things like dynamic range. We want to look at low light performance, and Jordan needs to evaluate the video quality as well from the stuff that he's just shot. So we're going to get some lunch. We're going to head out to some new locations, and we're going to finish up the D500 review. Okay guys, we've traded the serenity and quiet of the outdoors for the relatively busy and noisy suburbs here, but it gives us a chance to get home and look at the files on the computer. I wanna talk about high ISO first. So let's just take a look at the D500's files as we ramp up through the ISO scale here. Surprisingly very good for this APS-C sensor and great sharpness. You know, we compared this against cameras like the Canon 7D Mark II and the 80D as well. You know, just to kind of see what the competition's doing. And if you compare it here with the D500 files, you still get great sharpness out of the Nikons. So then we thought, okay, the Nikon D500 is doing great in low light for an APS-C sensor, probably the best on the market right now. Let's take a look then at the Nikon D750, one of my favorites and a full frame competitor. The D750 has very similar detail retention at high ISO, and it does have a cleaner noise pattern thanks to the larger sensor. But I mean, let's take a look at this, guys. Between you and me here, these files are almost the same. The, the D750, although amazing in full frame, high ISO performance is very, very close to the D500. It only lags slightly behind. So very, very impressive for an APS-C sensor. I mean, the D750 has a little bit better highlight roll off and the shadows, when you boost them, just a little bit less noise in the shadows, but the D500 is incredibly close. This means that you've got an APS-C size sensor that can handle very difficult lighting. If your exposure technique's not bang on, you're still gonna have the room to play with it. It's a very impressive feature, amazing to see, and it's really closing the gap between APS-C sensors and full frame. Okay, I wanna show you guys something else here. Come on under the blanket. This is the only dark place we can find right now. Get in here. All right, ready? Check this out. Oh, light up LED buttons. Very, very handy when you're in the dark. It's kind of a nice feature actually, be able to see what you need to do when you're doing night photography and low light shooting. Hey guys, it's Jordan. So that means we're gonna talk about video now. And the D500 is honestly the best spec of Nikon's cameras for video capture. The D5 had 4K already, but uh, it had that weird three minute cutoff and I really don't like that style of body. This makes a lot more sense and they've really thought the video through. We still have a headphone jack, mic line in. I, I do actually like working with the touch screen on this. It's still tough working with a DSLR on a bright day like today. Even with the tilty screen, I still found I really wanted to be able to look through the viewfinder like I can with a mirrorless camera. That made things quite difficult while we were out there today. Uh, battery life was exceptional on it. We shot pretty much the entire review on a single battery, which I never could have done with any of the mirrorless cameras out there besides a GH4. Pretty impressive. Now Nikon's made a really big deal out of their tri-axis stabilization in the D500. And basically how it works is it uses the two-axis stabilization from the lens and combines that with some digital stabilization on it. Uh, so we went to try it out. One thing you do need to know, this only works in 1080p recording. And looking at the results here, you can see it's got a very weird kind of jumpy, uh, it'll stabilize for a minute and then totally lose it for a second. Looks like a badly added digital stabilization in post. And I don't really see it being usable for any kind of moving camera shots, anything like that. Maybe if you're just using it handheld and staying in one place, but honestly, lens-based stabilization does a pretty good job there too. So this is a bit of a dud feature in my mind. 
I've always been a fan of the color that we get from Nikon DSLRs when we're shooting video, but I do like that Nikon included their flat profile with it. Now, this isn't going to give you as much flexibility as a true log profile if you're a professional colorist or matching with other cameras, but if you're doing simple adjustments, the flat profile does give you access to quite a bit more dynamic range, and it's very easy to grade. If you're just dabbling and doing some color work, you'll find this quite an easy profile to get started with. In terms of high ISO performance, I was a little bit disappointed. Uh, the image is quite good in 4K up to about 1600. Then it starts to soften up very quickly and also gets a lot of moving noise in the image, which is quite difficult to take out in post. I would really recommend going to something like Sony's A6300 if you're doing a lot of low light shooting and you want a crop sensor camera. The D500 had two major issues that kind of drove me crazy today, one of which Nikon could probably fix in the follow-up model, uh, the other one is kind of not going to go anywhere. Um, the one that they could address is there's a heavy crop when you're shooting 4K with this camera. It works out to actually over a two times crop factor of full frame. Uh, and it makes it very difficult because Nikon hasn't made lenses for this kind of crop factor. It's not like a Micro Four Thirds camera where there's a lot of ultra, ultra wide lenses. I shot most of today on a 10 to 24 mil variable aperture lens, which was not really ideal. I'd like to see some fast glass or some primes that kind of cover that a bit more. But with the long flange of a Nikon camera, there's really not much you can do there. It's something to be aware of when you're looking at this. The other thing as well is Nikon lenses focus backwards from every other video lens in the world. So if you're a professional videographer, you're probably not going to jump on Nikon because you have to flip your entire brain around when you're pulling focus. Uh, nothing that's Nikon's fault particularly, but it will drive you crazy if you're coming from a more experienced video background. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We had a lot of fun with the D500 and it's hard to find anything negative to say about this camera. It really does everything well. Video's decent, great speed of focusing, great image quality, and only the cost of four megapixels compared to the competition. I mean, you know, coming up to this, everybody was thinking, well, why would anybody buy a D500 when the D750 is basically the same price? And of course, you know I love that camera. I own it. It's near perfect as an SLR. But really what this is showing is that APS-C sensors and smaller sensors in general are not dead, they're actually growing, they're getting better. We've kind of got this renaissance of the small sensor now. We're getting basically the same low light performance and dynamic range as a full frame, albeit at the same price. I think the D500 is gonna find itself in the camera bags of many people just because it's so versatile. But keep in mind, if you're still doing landscape, portraits, that kind of stuff, the D750 might still be a better choice. So really it's gonna come down to that aesthetic look. In fact, the only thing I could complain about with the D500 is that Nikon hasn't necessarily put out a whole bunch of excellent lenses in the APS-C format. The 17 to 55 is very, very old now. Luckily, you've got companies like Sigma with their 1835 and new 50 to 100 that can fill that gap. So honestly, folks, if you want a fast, capable camera, the D500 is excellent and I think worth the money. Thanks so much, guys. Don't forget, follow us on Instagram, tweet to us, let us know what you think. Keep watching our show, subscribe, and we will see you guys very soon. Say one. Yes. Okay. Look more tired. Is it that obvious? Okay.